what was the last straw in your friendship? I didn't see her that week, and for the first time in months I didn't have a panic attack that week. So I went another week without seeing her, and lo and behold, no panic attacks. It made me really reflect on our friendship and recognize how toxic it was, and how much it stressed me out. That was when I finally started to see how manipulative she was and how she was always subtly putting me down. I cut things off, and all of a sudden my mental health improved dramatically and I almost completely stopped having panic attacks. I'm a happily married woman. A female friend, who'd recently left her husband for another man, invited me to her house for dinner. Cool, sure, sounds great. She said there would be a surprise waiting for me. Without much prompting, she said she'd arranged for a male friend to join us you know, you really need to loosen up and have an affair, yeah, that's a hard pass for me. We never talked again. She kept peddling an MLM, and I told her multiple times it was a bad idea. She got her feelings hurt when I told her the bald faced truth about it, and I told her she can talk to me when she runs out of friends and family to sell makeup to. When I didn't recognize the person I was talking to anymore. Just suddenly hit me. I don't believe a word from people who say people can't change. When people change for the worse, I'm ready to GTFO though with my dignity intact. My husband's best friend's wife. I attempted to be friendly with her and welcome her into our group when no one else seemed keen on it. She then proceeded to go around saying how desperate I was to be her friend and that I was a loser. She then constantly proceeded to taunt and put down every social media post I made, and when I asked her about it, she told me to stop my yapping. Guess who needs a job now and is not getting any help from the yapper? This guy would constantly try to get the rest of us to change when we did things. For the longest time most of us worked similar days and hours, and would make plans for our days off. He switched jobs as well as ours. At first we accommodated him and switched plans around, but then we realized he wouldn't at all. If the plans fell on a day he had to work, but still after he go out, he would complain that he would be too tired and insist on us changing the plans, despite the fact that if we changed times other people would miss out entirely. He didn't care if other people missed out, so long as he didn't miss out. He even tried to get me to change my birthday party one year for him. The last straw though was when we made plans to go to a convention out of town. It required that we get an airbnb so we could all hang out together. My wife did all the legwork and found a great spot for a good price, she just needed everyone to confirm they were still going. The guy waited weeks to respond to the group message and we lost the booking. We found one much farther away and much more expensive. The dude complained about that the entire time, despite it being his fault we didn't get the good place. He also refused to chip in for taxes slash ubers. All of that was just super annoying. What really broke the camel's back for me, was near the end of the day of the convention. Most of us were tired from walking around all day and hungry, but didn't want to buy a $14 slice of pizza. So we decided to call it a day and head out, and to stop at Taco Bell on the way back to the airbnb except him. He was waiting in line for autographs all day and was upset we wanted to leave when he hadn't had a chance to look at stuff yet. We told him we'd meet him back at the place we were staying, but that wasn't to his liking, so he whined that he wouldn't get to eat dinner with us. For whatever reason we told him we would wait for him to get food once we were all back at the BNB. We waited another 2 hours before he got back. He wouldn't agree to any of the restaurants we wanted to check out but finally, at about 9pm, we settled on a chicken place that delivered. The food gets there, he takes one bite spits it out like a child and says he doesn't like it, and refuses to eat. We were also effing pissed at him for it, we really haven't invited him anywhere else since. Edit, just the other day, a mutual friend started to organize his annual camping trip at his cabin. He all let us know that it would be at the end of next month. We all respond how we can't wait for the end of July, and settle on the exact weekend. A week later the, former friend, guy finally responds to the group chat and all he says is something like, July doesn't work for me, let's do this August, I just made plans for the end of July. I had a friend who would constantly make fun of the town I grew up in, my education, my job, and the way I dressed. 
among other things. I always just thought, well friends rub each other, but the last straw was when he made a fake Twitter account of me, saying I grew up, in the hood, and tweeting how I'll be a, virgin for life. It was just in low taste and it helped me realize that true friends draw the line somewhere. Edit, never expected this to blow up like it did. Thanks to all you awesome people who commented and spread positivity, you guys rock. I had a best friend from first grade through to the beginning of our senior year. She used to always criticize any ideas I had, what I wore, how I thought, she was super religious, I wasn't. I stupidly put up with it because I thought she might see things differently, and know what's best. She would also get super jealous and knock me down, because I ended up being better at certain things. She always talked shit about other people she would hang out with. I wasn't allowed to hang out with anyone else but her, and her friend group, to me. The final straw was when I found out by a different, real, friend. She would talk shit about me and everything I'd do to everyone else at school slash outside of school. I stopped talking to her midway through senior year, and hung out with the other friend and her friend group. I was instantly happier and less stressed. To this day I found out, small town living yay, she still talked shit to others, and made up rumors about me when I moved out with my ex after high school, because I wasn't married and that's a sin, and she's currently doing that right now. But it's okay because since she's religious, God understands. Sorry to go on a rant, the older I get the more I realize how toxic she is slash was. This dude was a habitual liar. Lied about everything, even stuff he didn't need to. Things like what his favorite drink at Starbucks was. Everything. Eventually he lied about having cancer. I thought he wouldn't lie about that, I was wrong. I grieved for my friend. Turns out that he was not above lying about cancer. I wasn't going to let my grieving be for nothing either. My former best friend had a habit of trying to make me feel like I was lucky to have him as a friend, who can actually put up with me, because no one else does. Of course I had other friends but even then, he would often try to make me seem horrible to them in an attempt to destroy the friendship. So anyways I became friends with someone, and of course he didn't like that and started being passive aggressive to her, naturally I asked him what was wrong and he went on this long rant, about what a horrible person I was and how I probably don't even like my new friend as a person, or something like that, so I was like eff it, why do I put up with this shit, and blocked him on everything while avoiding talking to him in real life. Always had money for weed, but always complaining about not having enough money to pay rent. Also couldn't hold down a job for more than two weeks. It'd go from being the best job in the effing world, to everyone is out to get me, and then, eff you all I quit. Friend who was friendly with me when I ranked first in the tests, and then cut me off when I became second after another guy coming into the class. That's a very weird criterion for who is worth befriending. Maybe the tests were about friendship. The latest one I ended was because she falsely accused someone of being a pedo, so people stay away, and she has that person all to herself, because no one else would approach him after that. I was actually the last straw. I was hanging out with a couple friends, and dude at first was talking about how he was chatting up my girlfriend's younger sister. We were in our early 20s and she was 17. The important thing to remember is dude knew I'd known the girl since she was 10. I was her first crush, and she was and is, basically like a little sister to me. I mentioned that hey, the age difference is kinda big, it might not work out. He said it didn't matter because he was going to pump and dump, or have a one night stand and f off. Both of these friends were utterly shocked when I told the sister and my girlfriend what was up. I apparently violated the bro code, and couldn't be friends with them any longer. That was information passed to me in confidence, and I shouldn't have violated that confidence if I was a bro. Like mother effers, how did you not get this relationship dynamic? What made you think I wouldn't say shit to anyone involved in the situation? What made you think I'd just stand aside and say, do your damage, I'll pick up the pieces when you're done, and then we can go down another case of natty. I was super close friends with someone. I would have used the my person description when describing her. All of a sudden, she just ghosted me. Blew me off, 
didn't respond to texts or calls, etc. I was really upset for a while, but after a bit of time and a move out of the area, I decided whatever. After a year, due to an illness in my SO's family, we moved back to the area again. She reached out to me and said she cut me out, because she didn't want to get hurt by losing me when we moved. So I gave her another chance, albeit cautiously. I was right to be cautious. After a few weeks, she was back to ghosting me. It's not worth my time to chase someone for their friendship. Every once a while she'll send me a checking in text. I'll either give a brief answer or ignore it completely. I still have to be civil, though. She's married to my SO's cousin, so I'll see her add family stuff. Myself and my ex-friend, dub him Tom, had a mutual friend, dub him Mike. Mike had a long history of suicidal tendencies, and had attempted it twice already. A few months prior, Mike had made attempt number 3 by getting drugged up, and standing in front of a train. Mike jumped away last second and got clipped, fracturing a couple ribs and dislocating his shoulder. By the time the last straw happened, Mike was all better. He actually healed fast, we were calling him Iron Man for it. We were all three at a party, like 12-ish people there. All from my high school, all good friends. All drunk. So, around a couple others, I asked Mike about his train experience. I said if he was at all uncomfortable talking about it, to please say so. I was drunk and wanted to know what that surreal experience was like. Again, I made it very clear I respected his wish to not tell. Mike said it was fine, and he was laughing about it, actually. Said how dumb it was and how he feels much better for the time being. After, Tom comes up to me. Tom has a history of being belligerent. He grabs my shirt and tries, I am twice his size, to push me. Says if I ever do shit like that again, he will kill me, Tom won't get off, insists he knows what's best for Mike. Know that Tom had never done anything to really help Mike with his issues. I tell him to get off of me, what the f dude. Night ends. Next day, 8 am, Tom calls me and says he's coming to my mom's house. I'm staying there for the weekend, I have my own place. Tom gets there, wakes me up, and again tries to berate me for talking to Mike about it. I say what the f are you doing, it's 8 am, I went to bed at 3 am, get out of this house, Tom won't leave, he tries to block me in my room. He is yelling at me, this and that. I finally have to push him, 20 plus feet, from my room to the front door. He tells my mother, I don't know where you went wrong, but your son is retarded. He also says, in front of my mom, if you ever talk to Mike like that again, I'll kill you and bury you in front of her, points to mom. I had to get in his face and tell him to leave or get the shit kicked out of him. I'm not violent, I'm just a big guy. F Tom. Had a college friend, we call buddy to each other, and literally went through all those college life stuffs together. But in this friendship, I'm usually the one listening and asking questions, and she's the one getting to talk about herself, herself, and herself. It's my personality to be such so I was okay. Until a few years later, we went to different countries far apart, and she'd run into some issues at work, got into depression. Still, I got her back and offered comfort, and help as much as I can. Then she stopped reading my messages, for months, so I stopped sending message thinking I might look pushy. After a week or so, I saw her social media account, with all our mutual friends there, talking how bad of a friend I was for abandoning her. A long speech about me. She even mistook that I blocked her, actually I just changed my name so she might have not recognized that. But like WTF even if I stopped messaging her, because she wasn't responding anyway, I would check on her social media updates all the time, I would think of her all the time. If I had a means to I'd hop on the plane and get to her. And yet she talked as if someone I don't know. But that's not the last straw yet. I messaged her immediately, apologized for the feelings she had, and asked politely if we can talk. I got ignored again, but at least she took down her post. I messaged her again and made her throw back video posts on her birthday. Nothing but a cold whiff. And then my birthday came around and I didn't hear from her even a single thing. That's it. That's the last, slowly burning straw. 
I have no regrets. Had a friend with super attention seeking and addiction issues. I always felt bad for him so I'd defend him to my friends, and to my boyfriend especially, because they used to be close but boyfriend had already had enough. He'd always want me to hang out with him and listen to his issues, especially when he was drunk and manic because of his drug usage. One night I actually talked boyfriend into hanging out and catching up with said friend. We were all drinking and having a good time. That is until boyfriend and I decided that it was late and it was time for bed. That's when friend lost it. Wouldn't stop calling us over and over. We put our phones on silence. I woke up to a long message telling me how horrible of a friend I am, and how he was sick of being my backup plan. Which I took extreme offense to, not only have I been the one defending him this whole time, and trying to deal with his pity party. But I never once thought of him as anything more than a friend. And the insinuation that I treated him as more was the last straw. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for more daily reddit videos.